Okay, folks, today I'm going to be dealing with the subject of multiple contact outputs in Studio One and other doors. Woohoo! Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. So you've been struggling for hours to try and get multiple outputs from contact into multiple channels and the mixer in your door and you feel like you're banging your head against a brick wall and that contact's probably a foreign word for uh, asshole. Well fear not, I have the answers to your questions. I'm going to be giving you two examples of two situations where you'll be doing this and by the end of it you'll know exactly how to do it for future reference. Now before we get stuck into that, if this is the kind of content you like to watch, that's content about home recording, doors, plugins and tips and tricks to do with that kind of thing, then please do subscribe now to this channel, ring the bell on YouTube so that you can get notifications about my future videos. Now as I say, I'm going to give you two examples. The first example is where we've got one instance of the contact plug-in with multiple instruments within that instance and the second one is where we've got one instance of the contact plug-in with one instrument like a drum kit and multiple outputs coming from that so let's get stuck in Okay, so in this example, we're dealing with the situation where you've got one instance of the contact plugin loaded and you've got several instruments loaded into that. So in this situation, I've got uh, some strings, low and high. I've got two cellos loaded up, cello one and two, and I've got two violins loaded up, violin one and two. Now, each of those is assigned a separate MIDI channel, which is assigned just here. As you can see, it's number one for these first strings, and those are set over here on my tracks over here, channels one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now, if I play this, you will see the problem. Yeah, each of those six instruments is all coming through on just one stereo channel here. So that's useless for me to actually mix this in my final piece. So what I want is a separate output from contact for each of those instruments and to be able to control the output in my main mixer in my door. So that's what we're going to do. So first of all, I want to select up here and show the outputs in contact. So we just click on outputs here. Now you can see that by default, you have one stereo output. That that's the one that the instruments are coming through at the moment and four auxiliary channels which we're not going to use. Now the first decision and the most important decision you're going to make is which of these instruments are going to be stereo outputs and which are going to be mono. Now you'll see why that's important in a moment. So I've decided that my low and high strings are going to be stereo because they're recorded in stereo. But the other four instruments, the two cellos and the two violins, are all going to be mono. So I'm going to start off by creating the stereo outputs. Now I already have one stereo output, so I just need to add one more. So I click on the add button here. I make sure the quantity is set to one and the number of channels is two. That's the left and right channels for the stereo output. Now this is the most important part. When I select the output down here, if it's a stereo output, I've got to make sure I start from here where it says KT auxiliary one and in brackets it's got one. You click on that. Now if you're adding multiple uh, channels, then you need to make sure that this ascending output assignment is checked and it'll automatically add new channels in sequence from the first one that you selected. So I go ahead and click OK and that's created that new stereo channel down there. Now I need to go ahead and add four mono channels for the other instruments. So I'm going to click on the add button here and I'm going to change the quantity to four but I'm going to change the number of channels to one because Obviously a mono output only has one channel. Now this time, when I click here, I'm gonna scroll down and make sure I select the first of the unassigned uh, channels. For some strange reason, I haven't quite figured it out, but in contact, stereo channels must be in within those first 10 outputs and mono channels are in the remaining outputs at the end. So we click on OK, making sure again that, that the ascending output assignment is selected. And then you'll see that the four mono channels are now added. Now for convenience, I'm going to go ahead and rename each of these. You just double click on the label there and you can rename it. 
Uh, but to spare you the boredom of watching that, I'll speed up the video here and make sure you don't have to watch. Okay, so now that all of my outputs are labeled so I know which one is which, I then go ahead and I can assign each of these instruments to a separate output. So strings low, uh, that's already selected to the strings low output. Strings high, I'll change this to strings high. I'll scroll down to my first cello and select cello one. Scroll down to my second cello and select cello two. Scroll down to my first violin and select violin one and again scroll down to violin two and select violin two. Now it's a really good idea at this point to reinitialize contacts so you do that just by clicking on this exclamation mark up here. That'll just take a second and then if we play the track again you'll see we're not quite there. Yes, we can only hear the low strings at the moment, and that's because we haven't yet connected all of these outputs to channels within the Studio One mixer. Now, if you're not in Studio One, this is gonna be a slightly different process, but it's gonna be somewhat similar. I will now uh, go down to my contact plugin here. I'll expand it, and I will make sure I switch on uh, KT AUX1. That's the first stereo channel which we added. And I'll make sure the first of the, uh, sorry, the first four of the unassigned are selected. That's those four mono outputs that we created. Now, if I play my track again, you're gonna hear all of the instruments. <laughs> So as you can see, I can control each instrument now with a separate fader on different channels within my main mixer in Studio One. So now I've got complete control over the mix. I can send them to auxiliary buses. I can add effects to each individual instrument. I can pan them, etc., etc. I'll probably go ahead now and actually rename and color code each of these. And I will spare you the boredom of that by speeding up the video. Okay, so in this second example, we've got a slightly different situation. Again, we've got one instance of the contact plugin loaded over here, but we've only got one instrument, and that is the drums that we've got here. Now, in this particular example, instead of selecting your output up here, the outputs are actually controlled within the instrument itself because this instrument has a mixer where we can assign a different output for each instrument. Now, at the moment, if we try and select an output, of course, we've only got that one stereo output that we normally have. What we want is a few separate mono outputs and some stereo outputs. So I'm gonna have a mono output for each of these instruments, excluding the tambourine and the cowbell because they're not used in this little piece of music. So I've got the kick drum here, I've got the snare drum, I've got the hi-hat, toms one, two, and three. So all together, that's six mono instruments there that I want to output. Now, in addition to that, I've also got a stereo output here for the overheads, and I've got a stereo output for the room. So I want two stereo outputs as well. And that is as well as the master output, which currently is going through to stereo one. So in total, I need to add two stereo channels and six mono channels. So let's go ahead and do that. I click on the outputs here to show the output interface. I click on the add here. I'm gonna add my two stereo channels. And of course the number of channels for each of those is two for left and right for each. And then I go down, select aux one, because that's where I'm gonna start from. And I'm gonna assign them in, a, in an ascending nature. So I have ascending output assignment checked here. I'll click on okay. And that's added those two extra stereo outputs. Now I want six mono outputs for each of the instruments. So I'm gonna, uh, again, click on plus down here. I'm gonna select quantity as six, and I'm gonna make the number of channels one because they're mono uh, outputs. Now, as I said in the previous example, for mono outputs, we scroll down and we start from where it says KT unassigned one. Again, make sure a sending output assignment is selected and click okay. 
So now we have uh, those stereo outputs and all of these mono outputs added. I'm gonna go ahead again and rename all of those outputs, but I'm gonna speed up the video so you don't have to watch. Okay, so now that they're all renamed and they're all there, I'm gonna click on this exclamation mark up here and that reinitializes contact so that we'll be able to see all of those outputs down here. Let's start off by assigning each of the individual drums. So we'll start with kick and we'll assign it to kick. We'll go to snare, assign it to snare, hi-hat to hi-hat, tom one, two, and three. Now I want to go uh, over here uh, to where the overhead stereo uh, channel is. For that, I set that to overhead stereo and for the room, I set it to room. So if I play this at the moment, you're not going to hear very much. So we do actually need to make sure we create these channels in the Studio One mixer. So we expand the section here and we make sure that auxiliary one and two, that's the two stereo channels we added are clicked. And then we also make sure that we switch on the first six of these mono channels here. So now that I've got all of these channels showing in Studio One, if I play, you should be able to hear them all and see them all on their various channels on the mixer. Okay, so as in the previous example, we're gonna have full control now over the mix of our kit. Now you may be wondering that about this one down here, that is uh, stereo channel one, because nothing's coming out of there. Well, I left that there because um, if we go up here to the buses in the mixer, you can see that reverb is muted. I'll switch that reverb. Uh, so that it's not muted and I'll send uh, one of the instruments say the snare through to the reverb I'll play again and you can see now that the um, channel one there is actually showing some activity and that's the reverb from the snare so I leave that one on there because you can't actually get rid of the master channel and the reverb always goes through to the master channel on this particular instrument so I'm gonna go ahead now again, and I'm going to rename all of the channels down here, and I'll speed the video up so that you don't have to endure it. So now that I've got them all renamed, I just wanna point out one thing. If you have a look and I play the track here, um, and have a listen to the snare. If I adjust the mixer within the actual uh, contact instrument now, you'll see that it has no effect. And that's because once you've routed that snare out through to that channel, um, it, this mixer no longer has an effect on that instrument. So that's something worth keeping in mind. It may not be the same for all instruments in contact, so you need to make sure of that because um, you could be setting a mix here before you change anything down there. So there you have it. Now you can mock lesser beings who know not what they do with contact outputs and you can get on and make great music. As I say, if you haven't done it yet, please subscribe to this channel so that you can get weekly videos about making music and recording music at home. With that said, I will see you next week.